Hello, Facebook. It is Kristen. How are you doing today? Just double checking to make sure that all is well in the world. We are live and we are. So welcome to today's Fit for Success podcast. My name is Kristen Nolan. I'm a health expert and speaker for busy professional women and men. And today I'm so excited because I'm interviewing Melanie Layer, and she is a high impact and luxury brand coach. She lives a nomadic lifestyle, which I'm secretly jealous of. Well, now you all know, and travels the world with her man, Kevin. Today, they lead the Alpha Couple Protocol. Four years ago, Melanie was single, brokenhearted, and bankrupt. And today she is living the life of her dreams and is leading the way for her devoted clients and followers. This woman has unlocked the secret to self-actualization through self-love, and she is here to share her secrets with us today. Melanie, welcome to our show. I'm so thrilled to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm very excited to be here. Good, good, good. And Melanie just told me that she is off to Acapulco tomorrow. Well, close to Acapulco, right? In Mexico? Yes. So from Montreal, she's currently in Montreal and she's jetting down to Acapulco to get some sun. What you doing down there? Well, I'm actually going to a yoga, dance, cleanse, healing, woo-woo retreat that I cannot wait to get to. And this one, Kevin's not coming. It's just myself. So nice. lo self-love, self-care is on the agenda. I love that. I absolutely love that. Well, let's kick things off by you sharing with our audience a little bit more about your background and the transformational work that you are doing to help entrepreneurs crush their sales goals. Well, I first started my journey as a coach invisibly, completely invisibly. Um, as Kristen said, I was bankrupt and I was in a really, really bad place in my life. I had broken up with the man that I thought was going to be the one. And it just completely destroyed me. And I bought a relationship coaching program in order to turn my situation around and fell in love with relationship coaching. So I really, I watched this program on repeat, like 12 hours a day. I was a little intense about it. But what happened is I started manifesting people calling me and asking me if I could give them advice on relationships, even though I'd never said I was a coach or anything, just like the law of attraction started working its ways. Right. And um, I just started coaching that way. And I grew, so my brand was the invisible coach, which means I had to create a way to understand how to do referrals and, and things like that. Because everything was like an underground secret network. I was 25 at the time. I didn't think anyone would hire me. I looked like a kid. Plus I was bankrupt. It's not really the best time to start your own business. Right. So I kind of got stuck there for a little bit, but I built my business invisibly. I made it to six figures in a couple of months. And then I started telling my story and people were like, would you coach me? I want to become a coach. I want to become... So I started doing that and then kind of liked meeting people in person. I was like, I don't want to be invisible anymore. So I launched a Facebook page and I was petrified because I was like, okay, I've got to go from completely invisible to looking like I'm someone online. And that transition was really scary and awful, but yeah. I nailed it. I did it. Now I have great followers and I really enjoy it. And I run a school called the impact Academy also where I teach people to grow their impact online. And so it all kind of turned around for me. I love it. Oh my God, what an incredible story. I know that there is way more to your story, actually. So you all better start following Melanie because she is doing Facebook Lives all the time, sharing little tidbits with you. And she has some intense moments that will absolutely inspire the heck out of you. But Melanie, I want you to talk to us a little bit about that transition. What were some of the steps that you took, You know, maybe integrating self-care, self-love, to show yourself that you can do this, you can be visible. I mean, it must have been a really vulnerable time for you to go from being unseen to being seen. And I know that a lot of entrepreneurs um, struggle with that transition. So can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yes. Well, one of the biggest parts, this didn't just change my business, it changed my life completely. Because what I realized is the way I treat myself is exactly the standard for how other people treat me. That and again, in, say that so, again. The way I treat myself is exactly the standard for how other people treat me. Mic drop. Thank you. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> like, what? what? No, seriously, mic drop that right now, because that's amazing that you said that. I want 
if you're listening to this and you're in our audience and you feel like you are too busy to take care of yourself and you're like, why don't I attract the right types of clients? Well, there's your answer. Again, you know, what Melanie just said is gold. Sorry, go for it. The way Perfect. that you take care of yourself is the way that other people are going to be attracted to you, take care of you. Um, anyway, whatever you said was perfect. <laughs> well, here's what I really noticed. Even just in relationships, this course that I had taken was telling me all about how you should be treating yourself the way you want the man who's going to come into your life to treat you. Mm -hmm. And I thought, what would that even be like? So, you know, just the way it, I, I, this is crazy, but in the morning before I'd get out of bed, I would like stroke my Other face. face. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or I would like to bring myself coffee back to bed on the weekend and, and be grateful to myself for going to get it and bringing it back. And I was like, if I create a standard of self-care that's elevated, then the person that comes into my life needs to be equal or more in order for I me am, to feel like it's value. I am giddy over this. This is awesome. I mean, this the perfect relationship over this. Like, I'm not joking. This man I'm with makes everyone jealous. It's crazy. I don't know where, how... I don't know what happened, but I attracted the magic man from, from taking care of myself like that. Because he knows if he wants to up the game in my life, he's got to go above and beyond because I'm already doing all the things. Oh my God, that's amazing. Yeah, I, I love, love it. it. Yeah, he's, he's a cutie pie. He's a cutie pie. I've seen him in videos with you. So yeah, you scored, sister. Um, okay. okay. Can you give us, okay, I love where you're going with this. Can you give us some techniques? Okay, so how would that work as like with you as a business owner in attracting your ideal clients and treating yourself well? Can you know what I'm saying? Can you connect the oh. dots for us there? Yes. So okay. I attracted the man in my dreams. So I thought, well, this has got to work other places. Mm -hmm. Who's my ideal client? Because I also believe that you attract who you are in business. Mm -hmm. And I thought, what kind of people do I really want to associate myself with? What kind of people do I want to be saying that's my client? Because it feels good when your clients kick butt. You feel really good about yourself. Like that rock star over there, she's mine. You know, it feels good. Yeah. So I was like, well, how do I become someone that I'm proud of, right? Yeah. Just in my life in general. So it started, honestly, just celebrating accomplishments. Because what I realized is clients that made me feel uncomfortable were the ones that they would do something great. And I would want to celebrate them and they'd be like, no, it's not a big deal. So I thought, okay, how would I celebrate myself at the ultimate self-care? Mm -hmm. I've noticed since I celebrate myself in business, my business has skyrocketed. Every time there's an accomplishment, I celebrate it. Whether it means, you know, I just have a conversation with someone and we scream and yell and dance around. Whether it means like I'm going to go to have a spa day to take care of myself or the occasional one glass of champagne. But, you know, the goal is that I feel like I've celebrated my accomplishment. And then if I celebrate me, then other people will celebrate me. Oh, my God. Genius. So, I, I, I love it. it. That's so amazing. I, go ahead. Yeah. So then I start, I thought, what else can I do? So I started implementing meditation. Mm -hmm. um, my gratitudes, because I thought I want, I want to write my gratitudes for people so that one day I end up on other people's gratitudes. You attract who you are in business, right? So I started doing gratitude lists, meditations, uh, just being really conscious about taking care of me. Mm. Oh my God. That's amazing. You know what? It's so interesting that you're, you're talking about this because I've, I've recently integrated these practices as well. And I've noticed it's, it's like, it's kind of magical what happens when you do pay attention to this stuff. And this girl I was interviewing yesterday, Laura Verrilli, she was talking about the 10, 10, 20 rule. So what she does, um, and she learned this from a coach is she does 10 minutes on gratitude practice, 10 minutes on like visualization uh, results that she wants to achieve in business, like really seeing it happen, come to fruition, and then 20 minutes on meditation. Do you have a similar practice to that or talk, talk to us about your, your strategy? So I really go with my feelings. So I don't push myself to a certain amount of time because once the feeling of gratitude leaves my body, I stop. I make sure that while mm. I'm writing my gratitude, I can feel the gratitude. Okay. And sometimes it's just a couple of things and some days I'll go for an hour. Right. But as long as the feeling is dwelling inside of me, I'm there. Got I it. do absolutely visualize, and this is why. I realize a big thing. I'm glad you said this, because when you are stressed in life, it's because subconsciously you're visualizing the bad possible outcome. 
Yes. <laughs> without knowing, we do this a lot. We visualize yeah. the negative posit possible outcome. Mm -hmm. And um, when I say doing visualization, we visualize every day. It's just this is consciously visualizing on something that serves you. <laughs> I'm laughing because this is another mic drop moment. The thing is, is our, our microphones are very thick and big. So <laughs> like, no, we can't drop. We can't drop this sucker. But, <laughs> I, but I love that you just said that. So it's it's you're actually just putting some sort of effort into making sure that the visualization is po positive and serving you, and that's the secret. Yes, and as soon as something in my mind starts to go, mm, yeah, like as soon as the doubt comes in, I stop visualizing. I never mm. want to tarnish the visualization. So as long as I can be really energetic and believing and growing it, I play yes. with it. And as soon as it starts to drop back to what's predictable, I let it go. Perfect. So instead of timing it, I just make sure my energy is completely aligned with what I'm in. As soon as I start to see it fade, I stop. Good, good. That's perfect. I love it. Okay, so for you, it's very similar practices, but you just don't time them. You know, you wait until the feeling leaves and then you know that it's enough. Yes. Okay, amazing. You know, Melanie, everybody feels like they are too busy to integrate practices of self care, of meditation, of exercise. Um, but you do obviously an amazing job of this. I know your schedule is packed. You're traveling the world and you're coaching clients. What really motivated you to dedicate yourself to self-actualization through self-love and keep your body energized and healthy in the process? Well, a big thing is I struggle with weight. I struggle with not taking the time to be healthy all the time. Mm -hmm. So what is it that for me that I've realized that works and what do I notice doesn't work is just trying to implement little things in my lifestyle doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. The only way it works is if I put on the bodysuit of this is part of my identity and in my identity, this person does X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. And the beginning of this year has actually been a really big turnaround for me because, you know, it's, it's like it fluctuates. And I think a lot of people experience this like, oh, I'm motivated and then it drops. Oh, I'm motivated yeah. and then it drops. And the mm -hmm. times where it drops, it's worse because as soon as you see your, your results reverse, we get into this like, Never yeah. mind. I don't care. I'm gonna eat everything. I don't need to go to the gym. It's already bad. Right. What's in right. the pounds? Who cares? Right. So that downward spiral, especially when you're busy, you can find so many excuses and say, when you're in that down spiral, I'm so busy. I've got excuses. I can't do it. The mm -hmm. only way it works for me, the only way, is when it becomes an actual priority. Like my business and myself are equally important. Mm -hmm. So who am I? Like, what is my morning routine? And it's not just about I'm going to drink more water or I'm going to make time to go to the gym. It's like this is part of the identity and without it, everything crumbles. So you have to make it that important. Mm hmm. You know what? Tony, Ro Tony Robbins talks a lot about that. He talks about must versus shoulds. And he also talks about how, you know, clearly, you know, if you are somebody who is an athlete, for example, you are going to have specific standards that you are living up to for your body. So basically you're taking these concepts and you have decided, look, Melanie, your business and your body are equal. You are a business athlete and this is what you need to do to stay at the top of your physical and mental game. This is the bodysuit. This is the person you are and you've set those standards for yourself. And now that's what helps you stay consistent. Exactly. You're saying. I've, been, I've been at the total opposite of that. I have been so on the opposite of that. And I know what it feels like to be so totally out of touch. It what does really, it feel like? Oh gosh. So it is so terrible for me that sometimes like I will be speaking and my hand will go in front of my body and I'll forget that I'm physically there. I'm so wow. in my mind and I'm so on the phone and I'm so busy with other people doing other things or appreciating the beautiful scenery that I'll get a glimpse of my hand and go, I am not even present that I'm here in this moment. That's how wow. disconnected I get from my body. Mm. And I've experienced this many times in my life. Right. And the only way it reverses is when I'm a hundred percent in the other direction. Small changes don't work for me. Okay. It's got to be like eradicating everything that doesn't work and being 100% focused on what does or I revert. 
Got it. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, everybody's a little bit different when it comes to that. Some people need the micro changes, you know, just like one habit at a time and you need the I'm all in or I'm not. Will you talk to us a little bit about um, when or how did you come to this realization? Because I know that a lot of entrepreneurs who do start to integrate self-care and exercise and um, proper nutrition habits to energize their body, they usually do it because they, they've hit some sort of breaking point. And they've realized that, hey, this is not just affecting me, now it's affecting my business, now it's affecting my family. Um, did you have a situation like that, a specific situation, or was it kind of a series of events that made you realize, Hey, I've got to, I've got to really jump on this and become this person who has these standards. I think it's a mix of both mm -hmm. because there, there has been throughout my entire life moments of, Hey, there's a problem. You've got to take, you've got to take care of this immediately, like a breaking point moment. But there also are moments where, because I've fluctuated so much in my life, I'll get that realization that I'm officially out of touch again. I've lost, I've lost control. Mm -hmm. And usually it's that reminder that really gets me, that really gets me in. But I, I am um, met JJ Virgin at a, mm -hmm. at an event a couple of years ago. Yeah. And she was talking about food intolerances. And I thought, I don't think I have food intolerances, but she said, you know, you might because she gave me all her reasoning why. And I, I, I did it yep. and I cut sugar, dairy, eggs, gluten, soy, corn, and peanuts from my diet. Mm. And when I tried to reintegrate them, I could not eat any of them. So I would swell up like a balloon immediately after eating yeah. them. And I yeah. dropped so much weight doing that during that program, uh, the virgin diet, because it was just basically stop eating all this stuff that you're not supposed to eat and let's see what happens. And I just literally melted down and I was like, what? Is it was so boring mm. because it was completely nothing that as soon as my mindset shifted from this is part of who I am and I'm doing it every day and I need this in my life. And I started making exceptions and you know, my, my family and people around me saying, it doesn't need to be all or nothing. You always do all or nothing. Just be in moderation, have a little bit, have a little bit. And it completely reverted back. Mm. And then it was like, no, that doesn't work for me. I cannot mm -hmm. do moderation because as soon as I'm having an out of touch day, I lose control. And I know right. some people do very well with, you know, I make sure I, everything in moderation for me, I, I've got to be on the train of I, my body's a temple and I treat it like my best friend or I'm, I'm gone. This doesn't mm. work for me. And yeah. I'm just really great for you to be able to interview people that have different mindsets and different ways. And not everyone is like me. Some people love the moderation. Yeah. I wish I could, but I've realized I have an addictive personality and I get addicted to the sugar high. I get addicted to the fatty food. I get addicted to it. So mm. if I don't eradicate it, I crave it. Mm, okay. Yeah. No, it's really interesting um, when you start looking at food intolerances and how much our body, you know, can get sick from certain things that just don't jive with our system. And I found in working with a lot of clients, especially entrepreneurs, that even, you know, so-called quote unquote healthy foods can be quite detrimental to your progress um, in the weight loss zone, in your thinking, you know, in developing healthy thyroid function and all that stuff. So I'm glad that you sort of figured out what those things were for you. And again, knowing your personality type, hey, this is the way I have to do things. Um, for me, I'm more of a um, I'm more of a type where I'll have, you know, three cheat meals a week and that feels good to me because I like to be able to eat certain things. But other than that, I'm on a very strict, you know, way of eating for sure. So tell me this, like, how do you feel that your self-care efforts have affected your performance in your business? Do you have any specific tangible results in terms of numbers or just anything that you've noticed? that is um, very obvious for you in your business? Well, from the beginning of this year, I took some time to take care of myself. Mm -hmm. Normally, so I have, I live a nomadic lifestyle, but I usually travel one week here, two weeks there, you know, two weeks there. I never stay in the same spot for very long. Mm -hmm. And in the last months of last year, I really overdid it in my business. I had a really great 
um, things that showed up for me, but I was traveling, giving seminars, uh, you know, doing VIP experiences, all these amazing things, and I really overexhausted myself. So mm -hmm. for the beginning of this year, I said my mantra, my goal for this year is self-love, self-care. I want to bring myself back to basics with that. And just in two months, mm -hmm. my business has grown. I mean, I've created a couple of passive income products and a couple of um, group coaching programs because I thought mm -hmm. if I can leverage my time and take more care of myself and be less on one-on-one -on -one calls so I can take more time for me and take care of me and I've generated I mean I'd be shy to say how much I've generated in the last two months because no, of it. say it <laughs> I, I want I, our audience to know say it so I, I cash in my pocket generated forty thousand dollars more than that I normally do in wow. less than two months implementing I'm doing things out of it's for self-care. It's not, I did not launch these programs to make more money. I, yeah. I launched these programs because I was like, I want to help a lot of people, but I need to be able to take care of myself. So how can I leverage that? And it came from a place of love and of taking care of me and them. And it worked and it's amazing and it's going crazy. And I'm so happy about that. Good. You should be celebrating that. And I love it because this is so perfect for people to know. If you spend more time on yourself, you're going to make more money. You're going to be more successful. You're going to serve your clients at a higher level because you're going to be connected, right? Exactly. I, you, you talked about it earlier. You're like, I get to these points where I'm not even present. I can't even, I'm like, I can't even notice that my hand is going in front of my face. And then you do these two months, you get uber connected to yourself tons of self-care and look, revenue just shoots up. It's amazing, right? Thank I love you it. for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. I think it's awesome. And I know that you're, I know you're shy about that. And I know that you do all of this because you care and because you're here to serve. Your heart is so in the right place. So thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. um, it, tell us this, Mel, what advice do you have for entrepreneurs in our audience? Because like a lot of, a lot of times I feel that people think, Oh, you know, when people have time to actually set aside for themselves, it's just because they're privileged. You know, they're totally privileged. They've got everything's just coming easy to them. I don't have time. I need to do all of this stuff in my bed. I don't have time. What advice would you give to them? So Einstein says you can't solve a problem with the mind that created it. And I believe this is the problem for people who create lives where there's no time for self-care and then blame the fact that they can't self-care because of time. Because obviously, if the reason you haven't done it by now is time, how will that change unless something changes, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So this is why for me, creating a new identity really works. And I know it's a little out there, but if you create an alter ego, like close your eyes for a second and imagine if you were this woman who had it all together, what would be different about your life? And you'll people who are just begging for a beautiful lifestyle or begging for a beautiful body, they'll think she, this woman, she's healthy. She's this, she's this, she's this, she's this. And I often ask my clients, I say, if you were already with a rocking body, if I, if mm -hmm. I could click my fingers and you had a rocking body, would you find time to go to the gym to maintain it? And they all say yes. Right. The issue is the return on investment seems poor right now. Why would I get up at five o'clock in the morning when I'm already feeling fat? It's gonna take weeks, it's gonna take months before I see results. I'm just not that person, I don't have time. However, if I could just click my fingers and have you be that fit, gorgeous, sexy person you wish to be, believe me, you couldn't wait to put your, your cute little jogging pants on, get your butt to the gym. So okay. it's, it's the identity that isn't congruent with what's happening. So all that needs to happen is you need to decide who you wanna be and have that person run the show. If I were already thin, if I were already my mm -hmm. ideal body, if I were already fit, would I go? Yes. Okay. When would I go? How would I eat? What would I choose to eat? If I were already thin and I were just trying to maintain what I created, what would I be doing? Mm -hmm. And if you really put that identity on like a little bodysuit and you're like, this is who I am right now. All the, all the decisions you make are different because they're coming from a different mind. And the crazy thing is if you have it inside of you to wish you had those things, you have that identity locked inside. They just need to come out. Yeah, I love it. That's fun. And that makes it so much fun too. You know what I mean? Because it's almost like you're just living up to this incredible standard, this person, this dream vision that you have in your mind of yourself and your potential. You know, Melanie, I love that so much. And the funny thing is, is that's actually the first two modules of my metabolism makeover system right there. Boom. <laughs> Amazing. You just gave away the store, girl. I love it. That's amazing. 
Yeah, because it is. It's so powerful to visualize this stuff, especially in present tense, right? Because then you get your whole subconscious mind involved in the in the action. And I love that you do that. That's amazing. Your perspective is so much fun. It's so great to have you on this show. You are a true example of somebody who should be on our Fit for Success podcast. Melanie, I know that I mean, there's got to be so many people listening to this that are going to want to know exactly how they get their hands on your free stuff. If you have any free stuff, like how they see you on Facebook Live, tell us how can they connect with you? So on Facebook, my name is Melanie Layer, L-A-Y-E-R. I have deleted 2,000 friends on Facebook, so I have space for you. Just add me as a friend. Um, I have a company also called The Boss Vibe, The Boss Vibe on Facebook. Boss Vibe is totally different. That's not me. Uh, so <laughs> and um, I do Facebook live a lot I try to give as much value as I possibly can to anyone who follows me and I often launch great pro programs and products that you can uh, follow me even deeper if you want but even just following me on Facebook live and watching what I'm doing you'll probably get a good essence of what I do and get some great tips and nuggets about what to do next in your life or your business I love it. And I can attest to that, you guys. She is on Facebook Live all the time. I am lucky enough to not have been deleted. Did that make, sentence make sense? Yes. I wasn't yes. deleted. <laughs> <laughs> so I get to jump onto Melanie's Facebook Live, and I can tell you she is one inspiring chica. And you will just, let, you know what, just follow her for the mere fact of seeing where the heck she is in the world. Because, you know, I was on Facebook Live with her in like um, in Greece, I think, like four months ago in Can in Canada. You were in Texas at one point, right? You were <laughs> yeah. amazing. So, and now she's going to Mexico. You want to see what she's doing in Mexico? Yeah, you better get on there and follow Melanie. Anyway, thank you all so much. And if what Melanie was talking about was resonate was resonating with you, go ahead and follow Melanie. And also, if you are looking to feel more energized in your body, if you really want to have a good understanding about where to start with this and you're just going, you know, I feel like I'm doing all this stuff. I don't know what's missing or I just need somewhere to start. Fill out my Fit for Success quiz and that's at fitforsuccessquiz.com. That's fitforsuccessquiz.com. I will look at your results, personally message you back. We can hop on a call and show you the best way that you can get started in achieving the energy just like Melanie Layer has. <laughs> all right. Thank you all so much for listening to our podcast, for being on the show, and we will see you next time. Bye.